So I've talked about Docker a lot. Um, I think it's a really big tool in technology and Linux right now. Um, and you know, I've shown a lot of Docker Compose scripts, and you know, I've written some of my own like actual Docker um, files before, and kind of built my own Docker images for personal use. But this is the first one I've actually like released to the public. Um, it's not anything crazy. It's a Minion translator bot. Um, so if you're familiar with like you know Minions movie, uh, you know the Rise of Gru. Uh, we kind of made a joke about it in my Discord server, and we decided to make a bot based off of it. So I thought I'd kind of show you what that process looks like and how everything works. So first off, uh, this is my first ever submission to uh, Docker Hub. It's really not too hard. If you have the Docker client installed, you pretty much just have to make an account and push your image. Um, and it kind of shows up right here. You get a link to it, and you're able to add the readme, and it uses just Markdown, um, and it kind of just gives you everything. So we've only got one tag right now, as you can see. It's going to be latest. Um, it's just running on Linux. This is built off of uh, the Golang uh, package, which I believe is built off of Debian, but don't quote me on that. Um, so you're welcome to download it and try it if that's something you're into. Um, but I just tried to write, you know, really simple, uh, to the point Docker Compose um, kind of application for this. So the developer notes I kind of put all the important stuff, and then that does require a .m file for the bot token and kind of put an example there. So let's actually get into the. Uh, here, let's go back to the main page to the uh, GitHub for it, which is what I released it on. So you got you know simple stuff like the README and the license. This is under AGPLv3, which I, I really like. I think it's a great license. Um, and then we can kind of look at it. So we've got the Docker file here. Uh, pretty simple. We're setting one environment variable, uh, moving the Go files over, and building the application, and then running it. So nothing too crazy. Um, and then we've got a Docker and Compose on top of that as well. Um, which it's really not doing much. Um, so it's just going to build the Docker file and it's going to pass in an environment variable, which is token, which is that token you'll have to provide for your Discord uh, bot so it can actually authenticate to you. So going back, we'll just kind of look at the, uh, the Go real quick. I'm not going to bore you guys too much, um, but this is using SQLite as the database, um, which I'm a really big fan of for little applications like this. It's not something I actually use too much, but um, Go actually had some really good packages for it, so shout out to the Matt N Go SQLite 3 and then uh, the BW Marin Discord Go as well. So big thing here um, is you know we've got a database that we're connecting to, um, but everything's really happening right here. So after we collect that token, we're going to attempt to use this Discord Go bot uh, or package to connect and create a new bot. Um, it's going to watch for any time a new message is pushed, and when it is, it's going to identify it, make sure it's actually coming from a human, um, and then it's going to uh, just push out messages. So it's going to look for messages, and when it sees anything not created by itself, it's going to parse it and see if it has an explanation by MT for Minion Translate, and that's going to take that and it's going to translate it using the database. That's what we're going to call uh, the translate. Uh, which pulls us up here, does the database calls. Again, you can look at the code if you're interested. I'll put a link, um, but that's not really exactly what we're focusing on. Um, more it's just kind of about that release process, right? So the big thing is, is there's going to be a lot of examples on the internet um, on like how to build a Docker file for the certain language you're working in. So whether it's, you know, Python or Ruby or Fortran or Golang or Rust, uh, you're going to find something, and let's say you're using a really weird language and you're not going to find something, you can just, of course, grab like Alpine, Ubuntu, um, or whatever your preference is. So I actually did originally have this running on Alpine, but I was running into some issues, and I didn't really feel like dealing with it too much, quite honestly. So it's not that hefty to use just the base Go image. And you can even see uh, something I might highlight is we're using a certain version of Golang. So this is not the newest. I think it's a couple versions behind, uh, just like minor release versions. Um, and I was able to kind of specify the exact one I wanted, and I chose the one that I developed this on. So going from there, I actually do kind of want to show you guys how to deploy this. Um, so it's not too hard. Um, you guys are probably familiar with the uh, Docker commands, but we can kind of go through that as well if we need to. Um, but the first thing I did is I kind of made a test channel, because um, I don't want to show you guys a bunch of my actual Discord stuff I'm doing. Um, but we've got this. It's just got me in it right now. Um, and I've blanked out some stuff, so we're going to have to kind of skip through some stuff. As you can see, I kind of blanked out the application ID and the public key. Um, but you're going to go to your applications page, and it's going to bring you to this. Uh, you can kind of set your description and how everything works. Um, if we go back to applications, you'll see the applications I'm storing. This is going to be from discord.com forward slash developers forward slash applications. And then it'll take you to this page where you can create a new app. 
Um, and then from there, we can actually do a bit more. So it's gonna show you a client ID, which is gonna be the token you're gonna to need for this. So again, if we look at the example, we're gonna see that it goes in the .m for token equals your token. Um, so that's really the one thing you have to do because you're using a proprietary application, you're gonna to have to authenticate in some way, shape or form. So you're gonna to have to do that. And then from there, it actually gets pretty easy. So you just have to kind of tell it what you're doing. So for example, um, it's really nice. They have this URL generator for OAuth. So I can say it's gonna be a bot and it's gonna send messages and read messages. So we can take this link and copy it here. Um, I've actually already put it in here so I can kind of blank out some of my information and put it into this Discord server. So we're gonna press continue. We're gonna authorize it, verify that we're a human. And just like that, we have a new bot. So again, really cool because it's all built in Docker and we can just, you know, T and I can say, hey, what's, what is up YouTube? And it's, uh, it's in Go, so it's lightning fast. And we kind of see that on the back end. So if we actually pull up a new tab here, and apologies, I gotta log into something, so I'm gonna keep it kind of hidden. We go to containers, go to minion bot right here. And I'll split the screen with that. Uh, we can actually kind of see the logs as they're coming in. So you might notice that's the exact same message. So it read the message and it's printing it out and it does it just again about in real time. So this is another message. And there it is. So actually it's pushing to Discord much faster than even as my Portainer instance, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so I just think it's really cool. Um, I kind of want to get more exposure um, to like how to build a Docker Hub image. Um, you really just kind of open up a command line. We can go for a oh, new one right here. And we can clear that. It's going crazy. You're just going to do, you know, a Docker image tag. Um, then you're going to do a Docker login. And then you can just do a Docker push. And you just put that. So for this one, let's say it's like minion translator latest you do that it's going to push it up it's going to send you a link and you can actually get going so i will say as a free user of uh, docker hub i was actually a little disappointed with the features so you're going to notice um, i put my github like down here where if we go to an image more like um I'm trying to think of a good one minio is a really good image i like that a lot it's an s3 compliant kind of container if i could find it here it is so this is a bit more popular. You're gonna notice it actually has like the source repository linked here where mine was just kind of linked in the readme. Um, you do lack a fair amount of features using this as a, a free user, even if you upload the image for anybody to download and don't make it private. Um, so I think that is something that uh, Docker Hub could do a bit better, um, but it's really nice. And you know, um, someone searches for my container or they find it from this video or something, they'll be able to just clone it down and build it. Um, so if I happen to go to GitHub, pull everything down, and then run it that way, it's a bit more transparent and it give them, gives them kind of the option. And of course it's linked. So if they want to use the GitHub as well, they can. So yeah, um, running a container is not that hard. Uh, pushing it up to source and allowing the Docker Hub to use it um, is not a bad time. I recommend you really give it a try if you've got an application you want to share with people. Um, and yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'd love to talk more about this. So thanks, see you guys in the next one.